right, good morning. Another day here, another day of life, another day to thank the Lord for all that he's done for us. And uh, tomorrow is the big day. So what's the big day? The uh, big meeting with the BRICS nations where they're going to talk about their new currency, their gold-backed currency, uh, central bank digital currency. Um, as we move closer to the implementation of the mark of the beast in the future, the nations of the world are going to have to get used to the concept of digital currency. Of course, most people are already. They use their debit card or credit card or whatever. They don't use physical cash. Um, but the new digital currency thing is, uh, there's a lot of pushback to it, which is a good thing. But um, my theory on how this whole thing works, uh, and you can share your opinions in the comments section below, um, what you think about it. Um, I think what they're going to do is in an effort to get gold and silver out of the hands of the people, I think that they are going to momentarily or temporarily allow the prices to go up pretty high for precious metals. And um, and to everybody out there, I, I get these people, I realize there's some younger people that, that really are just very stupid, and they keep saying that uh, gold has no real value to it, and, and silver, you know, there's no, no value. Um, that is said in complete ignorance and you need to repent of that um because it's i don't i don't understand how people can be that dumb i mean thousands of years gold has been fought over um you know you trains robbed to get the gold supply and you know um how many times that they've required gold as payment you know squirrel back in the woods there Woke him up too early, I guess. But, uh, you know, gold has been, has thousands of years of history of being worth something. Okay, gold jewelry, the gold, people find gold. You know, the gold rush here in America. Oh, it's all because it's perceived to be wealthy. No, it, it's, it's not. It's because it's a spiritual thing. Uh, at the judgment seat of Christ, you're given gold, silver, and precious stones. If you've done a good job for the Lord, you know, the 24 elders are crowned with gold crowns. The streets are paved with gold in heaven. There's gold and, and whatever in the, in new Jerusalem. Well, no, I don't, I don't agree. I think that gold's just not worth anything. Uh, you're quite ignorant. Okay. That is not a statement that someone who has any intelligence would make. But, you know, you just have to come out and say stupid things like that because you've heard some idiot like uh, Dave Ramsey or whatever, you know, gold is not worth anything. Um, that is a satanic statement, and I can say that. And some people say, is it a salvation issue? Well, the Holy Spirit's not in someone if they're saying that gold has no value. Uh, I can say that because it's a rejection of Scripture, as I've stated, you know. I mean... Uh, if gold has no value, then you're saying that God is not very intelligent because God, you know, does things with gold. So, a little bit dark out here, yep. Um, it's pretty early, about 5.30 or so, usually when the light starts to come up right now, this time of the year. Um, so, the issue of gold and silver, and by the way, let me just say this too, gold has no value, okay? Um, are you watching me on a computer? That's right, you are. Um, what about your uh, different chips and things in the computer that are made out of gold and uh, different electronic components that are made out of silver? Solar panels and things that require silver. A lot of industrial use. So yes, it is uh, very important to have gold and silver. There is uh, the industrial use, but then there's also... Um, just its value, you know, and whatever. So, uh, please don't put that kind of nonsense in the comments. I mean, I, I try to let people post comments, but I realize that there are some people that are coming along that are just trying to make trouble. And those kind of comments, oh, you have to let everybody speak their mind and whatever. Well, 
if you're just here to lead people astray, then uh, no, I don't really think I should leave your comments up. So, um, I'm not interested in arguments. Well, yeah, but you didn't consider this or something about against gold or whatever. Um, I'm not interested in that. But I believe, personally, that in order to get precious metals out of the hands of the people um, and into the central bank's coffers, uh, whatever, well, central banks are just, they're uh, globalists. They're not really loyal to a, a specific country. Even if they have a central bank in America or a central bank in China or whatever, they're not really loyal to that country. Um, the globalists are going to, to uh, take over the world with through the money system. So, um, but to get this, the precious metals out of the hands of the people, um, they're going to, I, they, I don't see them doing a confiscation because a lot of people would resist that. Um, but if they offer a good amount of money for precious metals um, through the BRICS system or whatever else, they want to dump the dollar, that would be a good way to confiscate the gold and silver. So I think for a time it will be very valuable. And um, if you have precious metals at that time, you'll have to pray about it. Uh, and see, you know, should you sell that at that time and whatever, um, convert it into other things like real estate or whatever else, something that will hold value. I mean, you have to think about this stuff, brethren. You can't just say, well, I'll just be poor and the Lord will provide and whatever else. Um, they're moving towards a currency, please understand, that will control you. So if you have beliefs that are contrary to those uh, expressed by whatever corrupt government tyrannic, tyrannical system is out there, they'll just shut your money off and you won't be buying or selling anything. That's the danger here, all right? We're not talking about, well, if it's bad here in this country, then I'll just go to another country. They want to make central bank digital currencies across the board, all nations. There's no place to run to. There's no place to hide. You say, well, then I'll just go out into the wilderness. Um, well, at one point in time, Christians could do that because they had the minds to be able to understand how to go out here and live out here without any, you know, modern conveniences. But uh, I don't know anybody that's able to do that anymore. Uh, most people, um, well, let me say it this way. I think that there are people that can do it, but the, the whole point is when you get into a survival, true survival situation, mm -hmm. You're basically, that's all you do. Every day, it's about survival. Every day, you have to look for food. Every day, you have to um, think about, you know, the seasons and the seasonal changes and things. Um, you know, what's going to be, uh, how, how to prepare for the winter and, and how to get ready. You basically are, are like a wild animal. And, um, oh, well, people live that way for thousands of years, Brother Brian. Yeah, I get that, but there's a lot of structure that goes along with it. Got a deer fly flying around my camera here, trying to land on my hand so he can feast on me. Um, but you know, there's a lot of things that go into that. Uh, but I think that, like I said, you see the thing in the book of James about how that these people have heaped together gold and silver for the last days and that the rest of them would be a testimony against them. Meaning, not obviously gold and silver don't rust, but it just means, like you say, I'm getting rusty. I'm, I'm not in using myself, using my body and whatever. Boy, I just can't hike like I used to. I'm just, just getting rusty. <laughs> so, um, there will come a point in time when all the precious metals of people have, you know, they, they say, well, I'm not selling right now. I'm just going to hold on to my precious metals. Well, what will happen is they'll become useless eventually. So, um, you know, they won't be worth anything. Uh, so there's going to be kind of a, a little time frame in there that you can uh, probably profit from it. Get, you know, get rid of it at the right time. But, you know, I mean, if I was, you always have to, the Bible talks about being wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Well... If you think like the devil's people, the globalists, you'd say, okay, what would be the smart way to do this whole thing? Well, um, if you want to confiscate 
precious metals, gold and silver coins from people, there's a myriad of places where people can hide them. I mean, um, if you have land, if you have a cabin in the mountains or something, come on, move. Luther's in my way. If you have a bunch of land or uh, whatever else, you can go hide them. I mean, you can put them in a, you know, PVC tube or something and stick them in the ground. You know, you can hide precious metals. Well, if you want to get them from people, then offer them, um, you know, good money for those precious metals. And of course, as the currency is hyperinflating, right now it's been American hyperinflation has been a long drawn out process. It has not been quick like the Weimar Republic or uh, Zimbabwe. Um, but American, I mean, there's no question that we have seen hyperinflation over if you extend it out over the course of 100 years. So, but it's going to really get bad now. I mean, you look at the last, um, since the Trump years and uh, 2020, well, 2019 actually, is when a lot of the quantitative easing started. And that's when they were printing, you know, at one time they're printing, uh, you know, trillions of dollars and injecting it into the economy. Um, you know, since then, uh, you know, the, the national debt is just skyrocketing, you know, 32 trillion or whatever it is right now, heading towards 33 trillion. And, um, they're just blowing through money. Let's see what we can spend it on kind of a thing. Well, that hyperinflation, uh, you know, is going to get much worse. So if you have precious metals, then those precious metals, um, could help to further that system of hyperinflation now you have people that would say hey you know we'll give you you know the if uh, the different countries the BRICS countries want to inject American dollars back into the American economy because the dollar is a weapon um, we've used the dollar as a weapon against other countries and now they're going to use it against us and so you'll have these other nations throwing a bunch of American dollars and currency back into America to hyperinflate things and so um, you know, the cost of groceries uh, goes way up, the cost of fuel goes way up, you know, everything becomes a lot more expensive. And people's savings, uh, the Federal Reserve, I think um, it was here recently, said that um, people will, will have used up most of their savings, if not all of their savings, in the third quarter of the year. Well, that's, you know, uh, coming up here pretty soon, I guess. No, it's, it, actually, we're in the third quarter. What am I thinking? I was thinking about the second corner, forgive me. But uh, so the whole point is that it's going to get a lot worse in terms of the economy. And you take the precious metals away from the American people and they go and they buy land or something like that, buy real estate. And then later on, you can come in and take the real estate, take over the nation after civil war has wreaked havoc in this country and um, then you just take the country just take the land from the people where are you going to hide this you know um, and you say what can we do to avoid it well I pray um, I'm doing what I can I'm getting the truth out there I can't say that this is exactly Bible prophecy uh, there will be wars and rumors of wars we know that um, perilous times shall come we know that there's a lot of that stuff that is prophetic in the scriptures but how it exactly works out if there's a an armed invasion of america um which i don't think would happen because there's just too many armed americans and it would make americans come together and fight against the common enemy um it'd make a lot more sense for the devil and his people to create a civil war which all the ingredients are there for that recipe if you know what i mean <laughs> um you know, we, I just want to say that uh, as far as the Civil War thing is concerned, um, I think it's very important to actually start a Civil War. You say, what? Did you just say that we should start a Civil War? Yes, I did. Um, we should do it in a civil manner and say, uh, I'm not okay with, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that's happening out there. The 
sodomite agenda and, and all the other pervert agenda and things. I'm not okay with that. I'm not going to just go along with it anymore. I'm going to say what it is. I'm going to say it's evil. So, um, what my th thinking is, in other words, if I'm getting a little bit, you know, going off on some tangents here, but the precious metal value will go up as the dollar is coming down. They can get gold and silver away from the American people by flooding the economy with more dollars that the BRICS nations don't want anymore. Inject dollars into the American economy, causing the hyperinflation to get a lot worse. And, uh, and then once people give up their precious metals, sell them off to a, a foreign country, then you can just come in and take over the nation and um, let the nation destroy itself through civil war and whatever, because if there's hyperinflation, uh, there's actually right now, the number of people that have precious metals in America is I think half of a percentage point, 0.5%, 0.5%, you know, one less than 1%, in other words, half of 1% of the American population actually has precious metals. And you know, and you, oh, you're so st stuck on precious metals, down there. Oh, you're so stuck on it. Okay, what else? What else can you do with your money? Why well, have it in the bank? It'll be fine there. Uh, well, the FDIC can and can't cover everything. They don't cover all deposits, right? They do not have enough money in there, right? It's a very small number that they can actually cover. Your bank collapses. If, if your bank closes and your money's in there, well, bye bye money. Uh, they aren't going to cover it, and. You know, there's a lot of banks that are not doing very well right now. A lot they're about ready to collapse. And so, um, again, you know, as a Christian, what do you do? What do you do with your money? Um, well, it's in a, a special, you know, money market account or whatever, but it's all that stuff is tied to the dollar. All that stuff is tied to our government. And our government right now, if you haven't noticed, is a little bit uh, out of control. Rogue, you might say. Um, the government is certainly not in very good shape. So, you know, well, you can put the money into, you know, some kind of other thing, a foreign currency or something. Well, you know, there's all kinds of issues. That's why the Bible warns about trusting in uncertain riches and, um, you know, investing in the things of the Lord is the only way to really truly protect your wealth. And so what you do is you make sure that your bills are paid. You make sure that, um, you know, you have enough money to buy food and whatever else. Get out of debt. That's very important. Uh, the Bible never speaks favorably of debt uh, in terms of it being something that Christians should do. Um, and you try your very best, but you, you know, put your money towards things of the Lord and, you know, that's something that uh, you're laying up treasures in heaven and thieves can't break through and steal it. And it won't be corrupted and it won't be confiscated or whatever else. That's the only way that you can really have a sure thing with your finances. Um, so, uh, what will happen? Um, well, confiscate the gold, let civil war wreak havoc in America, and then you come in and you buy up the land you take up the land um, which you know China's already bought a lot of land here in America which boggles my mind how an enemy of America can buy land here and the go corrupt government officials in America just look the other way I don't understand that you know you get back to uh, World War II era and you know could you imagine uh, Nazi Germany buying land in America during the war or right before the war, right before everything started happening. And you know, I realized that, you know, Brown Brothers Harriman and, and uh, some of the other stuff, Prescott, Sheldon, Bush, uh, those guys were Avril Harriman and things. They were actually financing the Nazis and Henry Ford was giving, you know, equipment to the Nazis and things early on. Because they're globalists, remember that? There's a lot of money to be, to be made off of war. I know that that's a difficult thing to accept if you're a military veteran, that a lot of our wars were fought to make money uh, for globalists, 
but that's just the truth. Um, it's a shame. It's a terrible shame. I don't say that stuff out of glee or as some kind of liberal leftist or something. I say it because it's historically accurate. So, going forward, what can we do? Um, well, <laughs> there's not a whole lot that would be called a sure thing. Um, you know, what I'm doing is, I'll just tell you what I'm doing. I'm not a financial advisor, that whole thing. I'll just say what I'm doing, and that is uh, what money we have. I have some of it in the bank, obviously, to pay bills and things, but I have some in precious metals. And uh, if it goes up in value, then I will be converting those precious metals into real estate, into, into a house. And that is the plan. Well, then what are you going to do when the Chinese government or the Russians or BRICS just as a whole takes over America, if that happens? Then it could. I don't know. What am I going to do then? Well, pray that we get to keep what we have. And if they try to come and take it and take us to a camp or something, then I will fight at that point in time. That's sort of just defense. I'm not going to just allow what God has given me to be taken from me. Um, without any kind of a proper compensation or anything like that. And, you know, if America gets hit by civil war, and it's, that war is coming to America. I mean, the division in this country is way too deep. So it's either going to be the BRICS nations will join together and attack America and their sleeper cells will rise up and start killing people, or the American people will have the right media event occur that will completely divide the nation um you know right wing uh president comes into power you know and uh the left just goes berserk and then the right says okay that's enough you've pushed us around for too many years and they start killing each other and whatever that would be the trigger for civil war in my opinion media event or a new president <laughs> coming in or some kind of a military coup or there are a lot of different things that could happen, but um, we will see. But I think that the safest thing out there is uh, in terms of preserving your wealth that you have, which is, you know, the Bible talks about laying up an inheritance for your children as a man and uh, providing for your own. So there's nothing wrong with having money. Just don't uh, fall in love with that money. Um, and make it into an idol. You don't want to do that, obviously. But uh, the best, safest place, in my opinion, is having at least some of your money in precious metals. And if the value of it goes up because the dollar is going down, again, understand it, uh, gold's not really going to increase in value. It's that the money is going to decrease in its value, the dollar. Um, so the precious metal value goes up, get rid of it, and buy land or a house or whatever else um, something that will hold value something that you can have you know i think that's the smart thing to do you say well i don't have any money brother brian i don't have anything well then spend your time in prayer um you might have to go through some pretty rough times uh you know i don't care how quote unquote well prepared you are uh, rough times can happen to all of us so I uh, just wanted to get this video out because tomorrow, like I said, is the big day. Um, that's the day when this bricks thing is going to happen. And, it, you know, it's not just going to be a small little thing. Oh, it won't amount to anything. Oh, yes, it will. Um, there's going to be some major changes that happen as a result of that. I mean, if the U.S. dollar goes down, all this fake debt and everything, debt-based debt wealth that we have here in America... People with all their pride thinking that they're really something and really somebody because they can drive around a nice vehicle and have a nice home to live in and they don't own any of it and they never have any intention of ever getting out of debt. I mean, that pride's going to get knocked down hard when the dollar crashes and it will crash. I mean, all currencies crash, all printed currency 
crashes in time. Um, so, just uh, stay in prayer, brethren. That's all we can do right now. Uh, it's kind of a little bit frustrating because, you know, I know that a lot of us have ideas of what we would do if we were in charge. I would love to be the president of the United States, <laughs> like that would ever happen. But uh, I'd make some things happen. I'd have uh, some big changes, but um, it would require a lot of people um, being eliminated. And I don't say that because I'm, I'm a violent person or whatever, it's just that these people have gone too far. And the wickedness of this nation has gone too far. So, um, won't ever happen, but you know, we have to sit here and watch the Bible prophecy being unfolded. And uh, it is prophecy being unfolded. Again, I'm not going to be putting up with heretics in the comments section, these historicist heretics that come out and say, there's no future fulfillment of Revelation. Uh, you need to get saved. Okay, the Holy Spirit. Again, please understand something. Genuine salvation is a new birth. Okay, this is very important to understand this. People can make a profession of faith. They can say, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. That he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I believe you know, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from all sin. They can say all of that stuff. But if there is no new birth, if there is no change that happens, um, then it didn't take. And there are certain things that must occur. They must be there. Um, and the Holy Spirit will guide into all truth. That's why the disciples came to Jesus and they said, how are you going to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus says, I'm going to send the spirit of truth. You have to understand that. And these false converts, they come out and they'll say, there doesn't have to be that. That doesn't have to be there. That's works-based salvation. It's not works-based salvation. Works comes before salvation. That's works-based salvation. Works after salvation is the Holy Spirit working in your life. Uh, you know, I mean, I can make so many different different analogies on that. You know, you get married. When I got married, um, my life changed after I got married. My wife came into my life and things changed for me. Um, well, you know, I was a single guy for years and then I got married and nothing changed. No, doesn't work that way. Well, salvation. Yeah, I, I got uh, saved, put my faith in Jesus Christ and nothing happened. No, uh, something has to happen there. So, um, and that Holy Spirit revealing truth, there are issues that we can agree to disagree on. The celebration of holidays, uh, women wearing head coverings, and uh, diet. One wants to eat meat, another wants to eat herbs. Fine, don't argue about it. But the doctrine, uh, historicism versus futurism or whatever, uh, it's future. Everything in the book of Revelation is future. It has not happened yet. You know, the only thing that happened in the past was John being called up to heaven in the first century. That's it. And he saw what's going to be happening in our future. And to try to say it all happened in the past, um, you're done. You're done on, in the comments. Don't write any more comments because I will block you. Um, I don't need people coming in and uh, leading my followers astray and putting questions and doubts in their minds. I don't need that. Um, and that's what you're there for. You're there to sow discord among the brethren. And uh, I don't have time for that. I really don't. And, oh, Denlinger, you don't understand that the pre-trib rapture is a fib. Um, you don't understand the resurrection. You don't understand the timing of the catching up of the body of Christ. I have no time for you. You're a posty. You're a work salvationist. You believe that you can lose your salvation. You believe that you have to endure to the end. You don't understand what Jesus did on the cross, okay? So, uh, I've tolerated it occasionally, but you know, I have to be reminded from time to time that these people, a lot of them, they're just there to make problems. They're just there to sow discord and division, and then they, they'll claim, oh, I know, I'm just asking questions. Can't can I ask a question? I know how you people do things. You are wicked, servants of Satan. So if you're a post-tribber, and you're into the work salvation thing, proving that you have to go through the time of Jacob's trouble and be purified and everything, done. Um, if you're a, there's no future fulfillment of revelation or whatever else, done, you're over. 
um, you want to come out and attack gold and say that there's no value to gold and whatever else in our futures cryptocurrencies and and things done it's over I'm not tolerating it um, I have to look at the my channel the way that I would look at a, gra a group a group of Christians a gathering of Christians an assembly of the Saints and you know Paul wrote about the people that were trying to get the Jews that were trying to get the Christians the Gentiles back under the law and he said to whom we gave place by subjection no not for an hour that the truth of the gospel may continue with you um, I'm not going to allow heretics to just come in anymore and mess with people so uh, I'm going to start you know dropping the axe on people and just saying you're done you're finished so um, that is going to be it we'll see you in upcoming videos thank you for watching